Hey guys, Chelsea from Attention to Details, and I am working on this gorgeous 2019 VW Beetle behind me. We have gone ahead, we've washed, decontaminated, we've done the inside, everything is ready to go. We are smack dab in the middle of polishing this. It's early in the morning, I want to get a good rise on this because we're going to get a one step polish done on this, and then we're going to ceramic coat this with McKees 37's, their two year paint coating. But before we do all of that, we've got to prep the paint. And as you can see, it's white. It doesn't really show a lot of scratches. So let me pull you in close and kind of show you what we're dealing with. Swirls going on. Um, there are some random isolated deep scratches on it. For this being a 2019 and brand new, and honestly, I've polished one or two panels just to figure out what combination. Um, it's actually very hard paint. So I don't know what was done to this vehicle prior to it being brought here. Like I said, it is brand new, it's a 2019, but it definitely still has some swirls and scratches that we need to go ahead and fix. And this is, uh, you know, harder paint, so we're having to be a little bit more aggressive. I'm actually using my 21 millimeter long throw. Uh, this is by far my favorite polisher. I picked this up from Ryan Harrison over at Raindrops Detailing Supply. This is actually uh, a a long throw that I purchased through him that he had special made for his business. But that thing is a workhorse and a beast. I love that I can do bigger panels super fast. It has aggressive cutting power. It's nothing like a rotary where I'm going to burn paint. But that's actually not what this video is about. I want to talk to you about the small spaces. This is fantastic. A 15 millimeter, 21 millimeter long throw. They are fantastic at being able to punch out larger panels quickly so it cuts down on the amount of time that you have to polish but when you have a long throw obviously you're not going to be able to get in to kind of these tighter spaces right here and up here where the convertible top is I've already cleaned I've already done fabric guard to this I don't want to necessarily have to tape this off and bring in a large throw or even an eight millimeter long uh, throw and polish I don't want to have to deal with residue and I also don't want to have to tape um, I, this is, you know, I want to punch this out quickly. We do have kind of the, the chrome finish here. So that is a little bit more forgiving when it comes to polishing. If I get some uh, residue from the polish, it's not going to stain it, where if you have your normal black trim, it will stain it. Mind you, I probably will tape just these lower sections off right here. But let's say you are looking for a nano polisher. You're looking for something that's going to allow you to get these tighter spaces here. Or maybe you have the door panels, like the, uh, the piano panels, you know, on a standard SUV or sedan. And you want to polish a tighter area without having to tape. That's going to give you good cut, but it's not, you know, the large throws. What kind of polisher are you going to look for? Obviously, a lot of detailers will tell you you're going to have to make the big jump and get the hybrid nano. Now that's anywhere from $300 to $600 plus, depend, you know, based on the package, the kit that you get. You could get one that has tons of pads and everything. So I have been trying to shop around for a nano polisher that is affordable, that will still get good results. And this is actually the kit that I just picked up. I have not even tried it out. So we're going to try this out together. This is the Proxon. This is, I think it's German made. And... Let's just be honest, anything German made, you know, you could just say stereotypically, it's gonna have good results because they're just really quality, well-made devices or machines. So let's break this out. You can see with this, it comes with a various amount of sanding discs and a couple of different polishing pads. And then also it looks like a compound and a microfiber cloth. I really wasn't too concerned about that, but for any of you, maybe a weekend warrior or an enthusiast, these are good, you know, basic pads to have. I have my own pads, where did I put them? Over here that I picked up from Detailed Image. We're gonna go ahead, we have our cutting and then a finishing disc. We're gonna go ahead and try those out on some of these smaller panels and see what kind of results we get. So let's break out the polisher and see what it feels like. All right, so right off the bat, let's go ahead and unbox this. Comes in not a top of the line case, but a decent case to protect it house everything. We've got our instructions, kind of breaking everything down, shows you again what's all in the box. Microfiber, nothing too impressive. 
got our various, we've got, it looks like a felt pad that you could use for either, you know, heavy cutting, wool pad, some sanding discs, and then a polishing pad. And then we've got a metal Pulitzer paste. I'm assuming that's metal polish in German from insert. And then we've got our polisher and it looks like it's already got the hook and loop backing plate does not look like it does look like it's interchangeable but i'm not quite sure how i would go about you know finding the plate we'll look into that in the future i'm just kind of doing this on the fly like i literally said this is the first time i'm using it i've actually been waiting for an opportunity to use it i do not get a whole lot of polishing activity so when i do i get excited I get to play with new toys. All right, so let me get this plugged in. Forgive me for the delay. All right, let's see what kind of power we got. So here we have just a turn nozzle. It doesn't really show you the speed. And an on-off switch. So if we have it on at the lowest setting, you can see it turns on. So that is at max speed. So I will probably keep it somewhere in the middle region, but let's go ahead. Because this paint, like I said, is harder, I'm not even going to mess with the finishing. We're just going to go straight to, and in fact, these are my one inch pads. I need two inch pads. Good thing I buy them in all sizes. It's perfect. We've got our 3D1. I'm just going to dab some out. Alright. It's a little, we'll make him happy. We'll make him happy. He's happy. Sort of. But, anyways, just kiss that out all over the pad. So that way we don't have a dry pad that's primed. We'll just give him one more dot to measure. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and focus on this smaller area right here and see what kind of results we can get. I said new car I'm not too worried about perfection I'm doing a quick pass because especially in these lower areas one they're not going to be as noticeable by the customer and two they probably honestly haven't taken too much measure to wash it so I can see here I don't know if it's pick, being picked up we've got some swirls and scratches I'm gonna do this section right here and just see what kind of cut we have I'm gonna kind of kiss that out spread it out we're going to dial it down and knob it up. If you can see, let me see if I can lower this and bring you in closer. You can see right here, we have flawless paint. So that did a fantastic job. This is harder paint and I was able to just in three or four quick passes be able to give me a good deal of correction. I mean, mind you, new car. But you saw we've got a lot of rids we've got a lot of kind of finer scratches throughout the paint and now i'm able to focus on these smaller areas and not worry about you know overspray or residue staining you know areas that i really don't want stained especially the convertible top or if we have trim pieces or things like that um, so i'm really happy i'm really happy with this purchase 
like I said, Proxon. This is the nano polisher. Uh, you guys, if any of you are wanting to kind of take your ability to polish to the next level, be able to fine tune, get in some of those tighter areas, even if we were to come in here and get some of these tighter areas, I would be able to do that. Um, so hope you guys enjoy. I'm not going to go into too much depth, but you know, as far as taking it apart, the specs, I know for me, I'm not, you know, the super deep person. I, I love Brian and how he can just take polishers apart and really just analyze them. For me, I want to know this is solid, well built. This is pretty much feels like metal. It is solid and sturdy. It's it gets a little warm when using it. I wouldn't imagine you would want to polish a whole car with it, but if you're doing section by section, giving it a break, it's already cooled down. Um, it comes if any of you are looking for a nano polisher without breaking the bank, uh, just wanting to take your detailing abilities and polishing abilities to that next level, check this out. I mean, it's, it's no hybrid nano. Obviously, those guys are going to be loyal to Rupes, which that's totally fine. But for any of you who maybe are like me, looking to get a quality machine without, you know, having to go into debt or, you know, do two or three details just to pay for one polisher, this is paid for, you know, well over with one one detail. So, thank you guys for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. I'm I am so thankful to each and every one of you who are subscribing and following this page. We are so close to a thousand, and I am so excited about that because that just opens up the door for us to be able to review more products and to just kind of take this channel to a whole nother level. So if you haven't subscribed and you've been enjoying the content, please be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Thank you guys for watching. Detail on, like Keith would say, and God bless. Have a great day.